Hey guys, I think it's working the microphone this time. Hopefully it is. Um, do, do, do. I realize there is no music, so. There we go. Hey, last samurai boy, how are you doing? Hey, artist verse. Oh, perfect, thank you. Thanks for the heads up. Um, so it's been a while. Um, how's everyone doing? Um, I think this is my first streaming of the year. Uh, I think the last one was mid December, I guess. So for this streaming, I'm thinking I'm doing something to get in the mood again of, of streamings. So I'll be doing a uh, baby dragon. I, I was asking on my Instagram whether people wanted to see something cute or something creepy. And to be honest, um, <laughs> the, the mass majority wanted something creepy, but uh, there was like a, a like like a draw kinda. So I'm gonna be going into the creepy cute direction, especially with the dragon. So it's gonna be a dragon, like a realistic dragon, but a, a baby one. So that way I'll, I'll be able to mix both of of the ideas. Hey, para, oh, sorry man, um, para para grandma. I'm probably saying that in a horrible way, but uh, hey, how are you doing? Um, este es el primer streaming del año, entonces estaba pensando hacer algo relativamente no sencillo, pero algo para agarrar de nuevo el mood de los streamings. Tenía tipo de no hacer streamings, entonces es una buena forma de retomarlo. So, um, for those of you who are new to my streamings, I tend to do my streamings in both English and Spanish, switching languages. So if you're wondering like what am I doing or if you have any doubts, suggestions on the creature I'm working on, feel free to ask them either in English or in Spanish if you speak Spanish, that's perfect. <laughs> so just give me a second, I'm gathering some references that I have here on my second screen. Y la idea es que sea un dragón bebé. Ah, me estaba preguntando justamente en mi Instagram si preferían hacer algo creepy o algo cute hoy. Fue un poquito una, un empate la última vez que revisé. Entonces, era justamente eso. Una combinación entre creepy y cute. Dame un segundo. Ahí está. Entonces, voy a improvisar un poco las formas. Saben que me gusta trabajar con una esfera lo más low poly posible al principio, porque lo primero que quiero trabajar son las proporciones, el diseño, en especial si estoy improvisando y estoy experimentando un poquito en cuanto al concept art, sacando algo improvisado. Lo último que quiero es tener millones de polígonos para trabajar en eso. This is the skull. I'm gonna be doing also the jaw. I'm using always spheres to get like the, the base mesh so I don't get like million of polygons and a lot of resolution when I'm trying to figure out pretty much the design. So I tr try to use this polysphere from the IMM. Find that brush right here. A, I think it's called IMM primitives. Yep, that one. So this brush. Whenever you select that one, you'll get like all these primitives. And I tend to select this one, the super low poly one. At least in the beginning. Hey, vato. <laughs> Saludos igual. Acá desde Chilangolandia. Uh, so I guess like a baby dinosaur. Creepy and cute. Yeah, um, 
I'm gonna try to get like the creepiness into a low level this time. I think my last streamings they there have been like a lot of creepiness. So it's gonna be a realistic dragon, like a realistic baby dragon. But at the same time I'm looking to make something like super menacing, super creepy. However, I'm trying to make something interesting and realistic. Not too fantastic. So something landed in reality. Over jaw. Create the next. So right now I'm gonna focus only on the head. There will be time to focus on like the rest of the body if there is time enough. If not, maybe I'll be able to work uh, during the sequence streaming on this one. Hey, hidden geometry, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Saludos. Um, artist bears will be very interesting to see your workflow. Oh, thanks. So I tend to work pretty much with spheres at the beginning, like adding spheres everywhere and using mainly the move brush just to get the shape a very rough shape and then i'll start using dynamesh and sculptures pro to get a cleaner shape more refined details i am improving with great workflow ah thanks artist great because it creates new polygroups yeah that's that's a good point um once i have everything defined and i start merging everything using dynamesh or sculptures or even boolean operations the cool thing about using these spheres is that i'm gonna have polygroups for each sphere that i created so that's gonna be super useful now right now i don't want to merge everything i'm gonna have a different poly for the for each section So let me split the groups. There we go. So now I have three subtools: one for the head or the skull, another one for the jaw, and another one for the neck. It's meant to be a, like a baby, so I'm not gonna create like super big horns, anything like that. Rough. And he needs like super big eyes since it's supposed to be a baby. Be dragon. I do have on my references a lot of like baby snakes and different types of lizards, geckos, just to get like that cute but realistic look on it. Did you create the NFT art? I did create some NFTs from some of my work, but I'm not doing like any specific art for NFTs at the moment. I did um, minted some stuff in Foundation, and what's the other side? I think it was OpenSea. But I haven't been back into the NFT world. With this I can start using the damn standard to get some shapes done. socket that little bit bigger I have like a second horn right here like very very subtle now I think this is enough to create a little bit more detail so I'm gonna 
add some resolution to this. When I use Remage by Dynamage, I'm gonna get rid of this super reaction so I don't get any triangles. Hey camcorder, I'm gonna be sculpting a dragon, a baby dragon to be specific. So I wanted to do something between realistic but at the same time cute. That's why I'm aiming for a cute little, <laughs> cute, <laughs> cute little baby dragon. I'm mean, gonna in more resolution and before going further I'm gonna save this. don't have a 2022 folder. Read my folders for streamings. Since it's the first streaming of the year, I don't have any folders, so give me a second. And. I need to check what number of streaming is this. I, I'm thinking a hundred and something. A second I need to check. So this streaming is 113. So There we go. Uh, what kind of baby dragon? I'm looking for something... Mm, at least in, in my references I have a lot of like baby snakes and geckos. So I'm guessing something similar to that, like a basilisk could be. Not really that bad idea. Yeah, basilisk. Uh, your Morty the Rat is good for NFT. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Especially with those variations. You know, I, I never thought about that one. That's that's really a good idea. I'll see if I can get back into that thing. Um, I, I wasn't really a big fan. But maybe I'll, if I see like the opportunity and I have the free time, I could go back to that. Start playing with the shapes right here, just to get a little bit more of the design. The creature. Some volumes. La idea es ir sacando los volúmenes, entonces ahorita estoy improvisando mucho y tengo la geometría como super sucia con Dynamage y Sculptures. No voy a preocupar por nada de eso, solo voy a esculpir y una vez que tenga el diseño voy a empezar a, a arreglar la geometría. But right now I, I need like an eye for the eye socket, so let's create a new other sphere. Obviamente este ojo va a ser temporal, pero con esto ya tenemos algo que quede en la cavidad. Entonces, de momento voy a dejarlo en negro. material oh I don't have my materials I haven't loaded my materials apparently that's a shame I guess I have to work with my default materials which is not really that bad I tend to work with this one at least at the beginning anyway me acabo de dar cuenta que no tengo cargado mis materiales, entonces 
no podré variar tanto los materiales. A menos que lo reinicie. Podría reiniciar si y cargarlos, pero creo que es mucho trabajo para, para ahorita. Uh, I can really imagine this turning out well already. Oh, thanks, artist. Orbit bone is very good shape. Like this snake, like this snake, snake skull. Yeah. Um, at least my, some of my references are a lot of snakes, so I guess there's gonna be a, a, like a lot of influence from those animals in this one. Change the shape so it's. The eyelid, the eyelid is actually covering the eye. And I don't actually mind all these artifacts and noise. It's actually gonna be super useful whenever I want to add like details. They're gonna create like happy accidents. So. Poder el uso de referencias, que siempre tienes como muchísimos ejemplos de dónde tomar ideas. Hey, Shalong. Chishie. No, um, <laughs> ni hao. <laughs> question, I will do it. I updated to the 2022 and the dynamage button went away. Is it a bug with my setup? Um, hey, one big, your dynamage button went away. Like in your custom UI? Um, if it if it's your custom UI that got modified, yeah, sometimes whenever you switch from one version to the other, especially since they start adding like new um, functions, some of the UI might change. So what well, you have to do is like rearrange your your custom UI again. It's annoying but happens from time to time, especially if they're like adding new features and they create new buttons on the UI, your old UI might get changed in the new version. Big chale con los materiales. Sí, la verdad es que honestamente tenía un poquillo de rato de tiempo sin hacer nada personal en Zbrush y no, no había notado que no tenía mis materiales pero bueno se puede arreglar fácilmente el rato no es mucho problema This is gonna be like the nictating membrane that covers the eye. Yeah, it's uh, necessary falta un poquito más de resolución. So I'm gonna change to working on the jaws, so it's not only working on the head. I remove separation and dynamesh. But este no necesito tanta resolución porque está todavía más low poly. My references sound very cute. Yeah, a lot of baby animals. You can't go wrong with those ones. Um, one big, uh, Xialong is saying that you can restore to the, like, preset, like, to factory, um, status, I don't remember how to call that one, but, but pretty much just like, um, vanilla style, so that could actually help also. 
I'm not working with symmetry, so I'm going to make a mirror and then mirror on weld. And now I'm going to activate symmetry. Hey, Jean. Great start. This will be a great one finished. Thanks a lot. Yeah, hopefully uh, I'll be able to accomplish something decent enough for this streaming. Lately on my streamings, I haven't been able to go very, very far, especially on the last ones because of like the time issues I had. I did have like a lot of work and I wasn't I wasn't able to stream that much time, but hopefully uh, that won't happen on this one. Hey, hello, hello from Russia. Uh, is it Privet? Privet? Hello, all the way from Mexico. Hey Edwin, ¿qué onda? Happy sea brushing. This one a little, a little rounded. Since it's supposed to be a baby, I don't want any like spikes, anything like that. Very subtle. curious about your logo what's the inspiration behind my logo um so I, i'm a big fan of history and that logo it's like a mixture of different crosses from different periods of history that i'm really into like the crusades and the parts of like my last name and um the second world war um what else Medieval crosses, they're, they're also in the mix, so it's like a like a like a mix of different crosses. Hey, Art, hello from Iraq. Hello. We're quite far. I'm, I'm in Mexico right now. So what time is is it there in in Iraq? Start adding some chubbiness here. La idea es que va a ser bebé, entonces podemos empezar a crear un poquito de músculos. Entonces este podría mezclarse con el de arriba, para hacer un solo cachete muy largo. Eso creo que funcionaría. Actually, mix them. Keep working on the eye. I think the eye is one of the most important things on the creature. So, especially if it's a baby, it needs super big eyes and with a lot of personality. That's tip of the medieval one. Oh, thanks, Jean. Yeah, um, for example, there is a cross, like the Alcantara cross, because of my last name. So, um, it's something I created back in college. Uh, um, I haven't changed that one like in a long, long time, especially because I already have the logo tattooed on my arm, so it's <laughs> I won't be changing that logo in the meanwhile. But I'm pretty happy with the design. I, I mean, it looks interesting. And I really dig it. And again, it's like a mixture of different things that I'm into. Make the eyelids a little bit more big. But right now I'm using mainly clay buildup. Con clay buildup voy sacando los volúmenes, pero también voy definiendo un poquito más estas formas. Trying to get 
maybe more clean shapes. Like the curvature right here, I, I, I need to clean the shape a bit more. So although I have a lot of noise everywhere, I, I really want to have those shapes clean. I mean like the lines right here, for example, this one. Cleaner just. Edwin, entonces no hace falta dibujar con alta resolución. No, al principio no. Realmente no es necesario estar dibujando al principio con mucha resolución. Yo personalmente me gusta trabajar lo más low poly posible, en especial al principio. Poco a poco le vas agregando resolución conforme lo vayas necesitando. Por ejemplo, yo ahorita tengo suficiente resolución para lo que quiero hacer. Que es ir definiendo todo, toda la parte del ojo y las formas. Llega un punto en el que obviamente ya no puedo meterle más resolución. Entonces ahí sí se entiende que, que quiere agregarle otro... Otro nivel de detalles, pero de momento no es necesario. It went from a snake to a chicken really quick. Proof evolution is real. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the basilisk, the one like that is supposed to be like a mixture between a chicken and a, a snake. I think it's it's actually the basilisk, isn't it? The one that turns people into stone and some people represented the basilisk basilisk as a chicken and some other people as a snake. I, I really think so. Uh, although I, I might be wrong. I'm not entirely not one hundred percent sure. But that's pretty much the idea of why I'm mixing like the the chicken and the snake. Hey, Matías, ¿qué onda? Saludos hasta allá, Argentina. Saludos. It's 7 a.m. in Iraq. Oh, you wake up very early, Art. It's 10.33 here in Mexico City. Hey, Hedy. Um, I'm gonna try to... Well, I'm not gonna try to butcher your name. Sorry, Harry. Indonesian, say hello. Hello all the way from Mexico to Indonesia. What time is it there in Indonesia? Uh, this one, I'm gonna move it further. What? Instead of moving like this eyelid over and over, I'm just gonna smooth it and then I'm gonna create another geometry so I'm gonna insert the sphere and this one is gonna actually be like the small eyelid going beneath the eye for me it's unique so Before building your own company, you already have a logo. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, I wanted to find something that represented, like, what I the things that I re really like. And back then, my idea was to sign everything with that logo. It's not really such a good idea because it's very complex. But um, yeah, I had fun doing that. So it's interesting. have that. Hey! Oisonter? Oisonter? Hello from Sweden. How are you doing? Um, I've been working for a while with a studio there in Sweden, in Stockholm. Really nice people.
Es vetusta Moria de la historia sin fin. Tiene años, Matías, que no, no veo la historia sin fin. No, no, no acuerdo. Lo único que me acuerdo es la muerte de Atreyu. <ríe> Creo que fue lo único que me traumó y que se me quedó súper grabado. Pero no me acuerdo. Voy a buscar vetusta Moria. Ah, oh, ¿te refieres a la canción? Estoy viendo que Vetusta Moria es una banda. <ríe> no, si era la canción o era la criatura a lo que te referías, Matías. What color do you plan to put on the baby dragon? That's a really good idea. I usually don't think about the color at the beginning. It's usually something I do end to do like at the very, very end. But I'm thinking something very, very colorful. Something maybe like red or yellow or blue. So he looks like poisonous. But um, I'm still trying to think on the design. Because uh, I do have an idea in my mind, but it's usually like this on my streamings. The idea might change and um there might be a lot of differences between what i had in mind compared to what the sculpture looks at at the end so i tend not to think too much about the colors until the very very end ah la tortuga <laughs> déjala busco morla que tú estás morla ah me vino un flashback, porque no recordaba nada de eso. Es... <risa> Definitivamente tiene un look de tortuga también. Wow, no me acordaba de, de esa criatura, de ese personaje. Teal. That's, that's a really nice idea for, for a dragon. Uh, uh, you don't see that many dragons in teal color. So that, that, that's something I really like. Hopefully I'll be able to do some poly paint today, so I can add that teal color. Make this eyelid a little smaller, very very subtle. también el párpado de abajo lo va a hacer mucho más pequeño se vaya metiendo en la piel um, ¿Cuánto tiempo llevas usando Seabrush? Um, ¿Qué onda Irving? Pues llevo desde 2000 2000, 2000, 2010, tal vez. No sé si 2010 o 2008. Más o menos entre 2008 y 2010. O sea, más o menos ya unos 10 años, 11, 12. 12 años, ya es un rato. Which studio in Stockholm do you work with? Um, I've been working with um, Ringtail Games. They used to be called I Gotcha Games. Uh, I only know that they're based in Stockholm, Sweden, but I'm not sure like in what part of Stockholm. But they're really, really nice people, and they have like a very amazing studio and like, a great art team. ¿Cuánto tiempo llevo usando? Ah, 12 años. Más o menos, digo. Un poquito más, poquito menos. Porque. O sea, empecé por ahí del 2010, 2008, en, en ese rango, pero no es como que lo usara a diario. O sea, fue 2008, 2010 cuando empecé a darme cuenta de su existencia. Y a como a picarle, a, a ver qué hacía cada botón y experimentar. Pero no fue como que me dedicara al 100 usando Cibros todo el tiempo. Uh, 
la boca un poco más pequeña. He's looking too angry. Maybe you can actually paint the eye. That might be a good idea. Um, how do you add? Uh, how do you add an instant sphere for the eye for the eyelids? Um, I'm using the eye man brush, so it's right here. Eye man primitives, but um, you can create your own shortcuts. So I think I forgot to say that to say that at the beginning of the streaming, I do have my shortcuts for all of my brushes. So you don't see me going to the brush menu. It's because I have like everything with numbers, so all the brushes are assigned to a, a different number. So, for example, if I wanted to create some horns, I can select, um, in this case, I have eight for the IMM brush, and then I have like the different primitives I wanted to select, and I just drag and a new sphere appears, and then it's just like moving the, the sphere over and getting like the shape that I want, stuff like that. Which is not a bad idea, having small horns. But maybe to the end. Uh, I still need to design the head. So hopefully that was useful, um, Art. I mean, Edwin. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine, Edwin. Um, again. Um, usually, if you press B or go to the brush menu, you'll find like all the IMMs here. Uh, not only the IMMs, all the brushes. And this is the one that's um, useful to adding spheres or cubes, cylinders, you know, basic geo. I think these uh, cheeks are making him look kinda old and it's pretty much the same if you see me like changing the size it's because I'm pressing S which is the shortcut for size or I could go right here or press S um, spacebar and I'll have like a small menu from right here, whatever my um, mouse is. Sculpting from one block better or from several blocks? It depends completely art on the way you work. I feel very comfortable at the beginning creating a lot of spheres and then adding like... Let's say imagine you are playing with clay, so you start adding spheres and then you start smoothing the transition between all the spheres. That's the way I like to work, but depends completely on your taste. a little bit more volume here. The way that's good. Se vea relativamente interesante el diseño, pero no no algo muy loco porque de nuevo quiero que sea medio aterrizado en la realidad. Oh, I was gonna paint the eyes. So use a gray color.
probably digging those eyes. That the, the black eyes, like from a gecko, they, they don't look that bad. So maybe I'll keep it black for the moment. Almost black, so you can barely see it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I finish the sang of the creature. Con esto, puedo ir modificando las proporciones. El pico es demasiado grande para ser un bebé. Ahora el cuerpo va a ser otra cosa muy diferente, todavía tengo que pensar en el diseño. So I'm still trying to figure out the head, so I don't want to invest any time in the body at the moment. Hey Edwin, cool music. Oh, have a good night, Edwin. Yeah, um, I'm using pretzel rock for the music. I usually tend to put some creepy music or some metal, but since I'm not doing anything like super creepy tonight, I tried to find something a bit more fitting to the, the baby dragon. Some lo-fi music. Make this one closer to the eye. Y una de las cosas padres de Cibrish es que pues, es todo digital, entonces no tienes que preocuparte por rehacer cosas o porque algo no esté quedando, puedes simplemente improvisar. Ver si algo te gusta y si no, puedes guardar una versión anterior y hablando de guardar.
for the design so get some proportions <laughs> proportions <laughs> and and one for the neck now it looks a little bit more grounded that's good Shame I don't have my materials. Show levels on that one. Generalmente esos conceptos los haces directo en ZBrush o haces un sketch 2D antes. Hey Mario, um, depende mucho. La verdad es que no tengo una regla como tal. A veces me gusta bocetar algo en 2D y luego pasarlo a 3D. O a veces solo me lo pinto en 3D directo. Depende mucho del proyecto si le quiero dedicar el tiempo al concepto 2D. Pero usualmente, si son proyectos pagados, suele ser que um, si es para concepto 3D, Suele, suele aventarme todo desde el principio en 3D Para tener control sobre todo Y si el cliente quiere hacer cambios en el concept Pues no tenga tantos problemas Con las modificaciones Porque al ser 3D pues tengo más libertad En las diferentes versiones, etc Y si es un modelo 3D para producción Usualmente me dan el concept antes Es muy raro que me, me aviente todo el proyecto Totalmente desde cero hasta Desde concept hasta producción Pasa, pero... Um, trato de que no sea porque es, es muchísimo trabajo entonces de preferencia trato de que ya tengan un concept prehecho o o mínimo unas referencias muy muy bien definidas and I'm gonna be adding some volume to create some interesting shapes Do you like more flesh? Um, at what point do you combine all these parts? Um, hey, Ibrahim. Usually when I have the design done, and I'm sure I'm not going to be modifying the design too much. Although I'm, I might be able to change the design or the slight parts of the design after merging. I try to have everything very grounded um, design-wise before doing the, the merge. Also, if I don't have like enough resolution, for example, Let's say I want to add more resolution to the head, to add a little bit more details. Um, then I'll start thinking maybe merging, because I don't want to have like a million polygons on this section and then having like a very low poly geo on this one. So that's that's pretty much the point when I start thinking maybe now it's it's a good idea to merge everything into a single mesh, or at least the subtools that are meant to be merged. 
For example, the eyes, they, they are not meant to be merged, so it's something that I'll never merge into the the eyes, uh, into the into the head. But it's usually like that. It's just a matter of like when you're comfortable and when you think you need more resolution, but at the same time you might need to have everything merged. For example, if I have more resolution, I would love to have like a transition between this section and this one like in this area so at that point merging is a good idea because uh, that way i can actually use the smooth brush or maybe using clay build up to create some interesting shapes here Importante ver el modelo de diferentes ángulos. Para que no nos quedemos trabajando solo en un ángulo y nos confiemos. Making the jaw smaller. How much RAM memory do you need to work professionally in ZBrush? Um, I recommend uh, at least 16. 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, you could go with less, but um, at least 16 will give you uh, decent enough RAM to get more details and not have a lot of issues with ZBrush. You don't want to see what I sculpt. <laughs> what do you sculpt, uh, liberalist? Um, also, what about the scales and stuff? Details that make the character whole and complete all of the details. How do you think? How do you do that? And what do you use to make those details? Um, for scales, that's a good question. Um, there are a lot of ways to handle um, stuff like scales and wrinkles and minor details like that, like those. For example, I could use some alphas, either if I download some alphas from snake skin or crocodile skin, stuff like that. I could create my own alphas. Pretty much you don't only need like a black and white image. I could actually use BDMs, which are like MMs, but more powerful. So for example, are the BDMs. this first. So for example, I'm going to use the BDMs that already come inside ZBrush and some of them they already have like scales, for example, animal scale. Consider that I don't have any of resolution at the moment, so they're going to look kind of low poly. But this gives you an idea, maybe for some of them sticking out, this could be an option. Or the other way that I really like working with scales, it takes a lot of a lot of time compared to the other two options but you can paint for example using masking the scales that way you have more control over this, the scales and the design of them and then just do something like this well maybe not that exaggerated but you get the idea this and then you start doing the same over and over so those are two ways that i can think of right now to create scales, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of ways. One of those cool things about ZBrush, there are a ton of different ways to create the same stuff.
<laughs> nice eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still thinking about those eyes. Maybe I might need to change the color, although black also works. I'll pull and push until the mesh can't stretch anymore. Oh, make um I tend to do that the same, especially with the low poly stuff. But the cool thing is with ZBrush you can actually just use Dynamesh and then you can continue to pull and stretch without any issues. For example, right now I'm gonna merge the head with the rest of the body, but I really want to split the jaw a bit, so I'm actually able to work a different layer with this one. Give me a second, I think I'm having some issues with the camera. Let me check this. Oh, yep. Um, so I don't think I'll have a <laughs> my camera on for the rest of the streaming. I was running out of battery. So... Sorry about that. I can keep working on this one. Maybe turn the camera at the end. The end of the streaming. Because I used to have some webcams for the streaming, but to be honest, the resolution is not really that good. So I started using some old phones and the resolution is way better. But well, the, the bad thing is that the battery runs out. Just making the cavity of the mouth a bit bigger so I have enough space to sculpt the rest of the mouth. I'm gonna be doing the same for the lower part, top part of the head. can get downloaded resources in companies, so I should default resources. Um. Oh, okay, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you can't download stuff, then pretty much this is, um, for example, the chisel creature will have a lot of scales, as I said. Also, there are a couple of alphas here that might work, for example, the dots might be useful for scales, also this alpha is going to be useful, so you don't actually need to download any resources, I mean they, they make your life easier for sure, but you can continue sculpting without them. Bikes. There. Yeah, 
y lo que voy a hacer es el paladar definirlo un poco más porque no, no tiene nada de resolución y necesito espacio entre la mandíbula inferior y la superior y ahora y con esto se siente un poquito más y del dragón voy a guardarlo como nueva versión I guess I can actually start merging this. Now, mask the front, so I have a bit more space on the mouth, so I'm gonna open the mouth a bit more. Or so I have more space to work with. I don't want any of these parts to merge because they are too close to each other. I save this. Eres en una mandíbula dentada como los peces acorazados. Hey Oscar, tocayo. Um, peces acorazados, deja lo busco. Como los prehistóricos, tú mencionas. Ah, sí, el placo derby. No es nada mal. No es nada mala la idea. Sí, creo que voy a hacer algo así. Que también no puedo ponerle muchas cosas muy dentadas porque como es todavía se pone que un bebé, tengo que mantenerlo con cosillas medio chiquitas. Pero pueden ser dientes cerrados como muy chiquitos. Como... Esto creo que funciona. Nada más voy a unirlo todo. Entonces, I think I'm ready to merge everything. The design is not gonna change that much, and I really want to work on some of the transitions between, for example, the head and the neck. So, for that, I can actually move this to the back. There we go. Save this. So I can rename this. And select merge visible, so I have everything, and then I'm going to insert that new mesh that it's super merged. This one, the rest, I'm gonna place them in a folder. Just in case, at least for this version, I don't need them anymore, so I'm gonna hide them. And this one, oh, actually took the eyes with me, so delete hidden. Go. That's perfect. So now I'm gonna select Remesh by Dynamesh, the projection zero, I have the reproject on, and then I'm gonna Remesh by Dynamesh. There we go. So I think I exaggerated with the resolution. I don't think I need that much. Give it another try. Dynamesh and... Um, 
Puse Zbrush en la versión 3.0 hace años. Acabo de atreverme a mi 53, compré una nueva versión. Y lo voy a volver a esculpir. Ah, qué chido. Felicidades, Tocayo. Ah, voy a volver a esculpir en 3D. Llevo una década dándole vueltas. Como trabajo en UX Design, no se justifica, pero digo, nunca es tarde, ¿verdad? No, para nada. De hecho, hay artistas buenísimos que empezaron ya entrados en una edad un poco más, más mayor. Y, por ejemplo, Chris Costa, que era el supervisor de modelado en ILM. Es, yo creo que de los mejores modeladores que hay. Y él empezó bastante tarde, como a los cuarenta y tantos. Y él, antes de, de trabajar en esto, hacía era banquero. Entonces, nunca es tarde. Definitivamente nunca es tarde. Apparently it's not symmetrical, so let me fix that. Okay, podemos empezar a mergear todo esto. Realmente uso Play Build Up para todo esto, para ir sacando como esos volúmenes. Y de nuevo trato de que las formas estén limpias, lo más limpias posibles. Hey Chase El problema de, es conseguir el primer trabajo Sí, tiene razón Luis en eso Pero Pues poco a poco, o sea, creo que Si lo que te interesa es esto Puedes ir empezando con um, Trabajos pequeños O sea, tener tu trabajo Pues con el que Vaya, con el que vives Y tratar de conseguir freelancers, por ejemplo hay páginas como Freelancer.com donde contratan gente y puedes encontrar como proyectos relativamente pequeños con los que puedes empezar a agarrar experiencia. Está Fiverr, también es como súper conocido. Yo creo que hay muchas formas de ir poco a poco brincando. Yo personalmente no me aventaría a renunciar y, a, y meterte de lleno porque pues uno tiene que cumplir ciertos gastos. Pero es una muy buena opción tratar de ir consiguiendo freelance que puede ser fines de semana y así. Entonces para irte adentrando forma gradual. Bueno, yo soy artista desde mucho, y así es cultura en arcilla. Ah, te va a ser mucho más sencillo entonces hacer la migración a ZBrush en la academia de los noventas. Uso más que nada 3ds Max, pero esto es mucho más artístico y siento que lo voy a disfrutar mucho más. Sí, ¿de qué trata mi proyecto? Um, ¿Qué proyecto? Uh, ¿De qué proyecto hablas, Oscar? Sí, la verdad es que si sí, siento que vas a tener un... Vaya, um, el migrar de usar Trillis Max y con la experiencia que tienes de arte tradicional, siento que te va a ser mucho más sencillo entrar a, a, al mundo de ZBrush, sin lugar a dudas. Porque tampoco tienes que aprender todos los botones y todo lo que hace cada herramienta. O sea, como que aprendas lo básico que tú necesitas para hacer 
tú usas culturas, con eso es suficiente. Y el resto te va a hacer la vida mucho más rápida, más sencilla. Pero es algo que puedes ir aprendiendo poco a poco. Right now, I think I'm in a good position to start using sewer measure. I haven't figured out the rest of the body, but I guess this is fine for now. And at the end, I can actually change the design later, so that's good. Now I, I have enough resolution and enough um, shapes to start adding more minor details. And again, you can see that I don't have enough, like, a million polygons. Uh, I'm still working in a very low resolution mesh. Pretty much the whole streaming has been working in a very low poly mesh. Which is fine to get, like, the design and the main shapes done. Once you have, like, the, the shapes, then you can start adding details. There is no point in adding details to uh, something that you are still figuring out. A este proyecto. Um, es solo algo que estoy haciendo en este streaming. Posiblemente podría continuar en el siguiente streaming. Pero de momento creo que va a ser algo de un solo streaming. Y es la idea es solo crear un dragón. Un dragón bebé. Mencionaba en el principio que había preguntado en mi cuenta de Instagram. Que preferían que hiciera hoy. Si un, un, algo creepy o algo cute. Y fue más o menos un empate, entonces decidí hacer una combinación. O sea, vaya, es algo que es una criatura, una criatura realista, pero tiene un look cute. Es, es un dragón bebé, entonces decidí irme por una combinación de ambas cosas. tanto exceso que tiene aquí en los párpados hacerlo mucho más sutil Upwork, sí, es muy buena opción para para buscar freelance, como menciona Oscar. Elance nunca lo he utilizado, pero dice que también es muy buena para los que trabajan en el creativo. Digo, yo no, tiene años que no me meto a sus plataformas, pero cuando yo empezando, la verdad es que fueron muy buenas plataformas para ir iniciando en esto, entonces te prestan para muchísimos proyectos y la mayoría de ellos como interesantes, entonces está padre. Es una muy buena forma de meterte poco a poco en la industria. Pero obviamente, pues, si quieres trabajar en esto te van a pedir experiencia laboral, entonces... Aquí lo que necesitas es mostrar un portafolio y esto te ayuda mucho a crear un portafolio. Um, I think it's ready for 
an an next pass of details. I'm gonna duplicate this so I can zero mesh this one. is taking a bit it's maybe because of the way I did this using um uh, forget the name shit um remesh by union instead of dynamesh but um it's creating something really weird here in the eyelid so mm, go back i'm gonna use remesh by dynamesh that's gonna merge everything that's close together like this and now i can actually use um your measure. And that's way better. So again, not the topology for animation that it's ready for production, but it's a topology ready for our sculpture. So I'm gonna hide everything except for these two. Double divide a couple of times. And create a layer. I'm gonna keep it. Hey, ¿qué onda, Jera? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo va todo, bro? Busca Meiolania en Google. Órale. Está súper cool eso. Creo que la voy a agregar a, a la lista de criaturas que me gustaría un día hacer en 3D. Creo que no veo muchas representaciones de, de eso en 3D. Esos cuernos del final me, me laten. Music World Alive tiene una versión buenísima de Me Meiolania. Voy a checarlo. Todo bien, sin chamba por el momento, pero nos va dando un curso en creen. Ah, qué chido, bro, que, que sigues allá en escena dando los cursos. Es eh, curso de, de. ¿Cómo se.? ¿Me fue el nombre? ¿De la carrera o es curso de fin de semana? Como el que tomé contigo. Y la parte en la que empiezo a limpiar, entonces. Start cleaning the ships in this one. Uh, 
and even though I subdivided this, I'm still not close to the million polygons. Still working in a very low poly mesh. But working like this, I, I do have more control over the geometry and the shapes. Especially because now I'm starting to add like more design to the creature. So design in the nostrils. Then there's going to be a change of geo here. I'm gonna hide the eyes. Build up just to get those volumes. Hey, ah, qué chido. <laughs> bueno verte de vuelta en los streamings. Qué chido verte por acá, bro. Um, es el lindo que tomaste conmigo, pero era lunes y miércoles. Ah, qué chido. Um, aquellos que no conocen a Gera, es animador. De hecho, está dando cursos en escena, por si les interesa aprender animación, pero bueno, yo tomé un curso con él, creo que fue el año pasado, ¿no? No, hace dos años, bueno, la pandemia ya está cañón decidir cuánto, hace cuánto tiempo fue. No, ya no doy cursos ahí, ya tiene, tiene años que no, años, bueno, sí creo que ya tiene ahora sí años, creo que fue en 2020 o 2010. 19, el último curso que di. Que, la verdad no, no es mucho lo mío de dar cursos. Solo fue como... Como en aquella ocasión y, y ahorita no, no... No me lleva tanto la atención regresar ahorita de momento. No tengo tampoco el tiempo. ¿Ustedes trabajan o estudian? Yo trabajo... Oscar. Estoy trabajando en un estudio de efectos visuales que se llama Spin. Dice que para me acabo de graduar y no estoy trabajando, pero ya empieza el estrés de cuando voy a poder conseguir el, el primer trabajo. Sí, creo que um, si te, te enfocas en proyectos pequeñitos así, te sirve muchísimo para agarrar experiencia. Y como te digo, um, de ahí con un portafolio muy bueno, la verdad es que ya tienes todo, todo listo para entrar el, a la industria. Prefiero hacer el concept art primero y luego trabajar uh, o crear detalle y formas como te inspira el modelo cuando vas evolucionando. Depende mucho, proyectos personales o streamings tiendo a hacerlo sin concept, solo ir viendo si nos lleva el modelo, ir improvisando. Incluso muchas veces en el chat salen muy buenas ideas, entonces no estoy casado con un diseño antes de empezar mis streamings. 
pero en cuestiones de trabajo casi siempre es con un concept prehecho o si me contratan para concept art, el concept se hace desde el principio en 3D. Ah, perfecto. Toca yo luego lo checo. Lo checo terminando el streaming. him to have like a very soft skin at least shape wise I, I don't want him to have a lot of wrinkles since he's supposed to be like a baby so I'm gonna get rid of like all these texture wrinkly shapes and noise everywhere soft like this one but that's gonna be taking a lot of time so I'm gonna take at least another streaming for that to do that Let me see. Again, it's going to be adding volume and clean all that noise that I have currently going on here. how it looks with the occlusion. Decent enough. I mean be a little smaller. Fue el primer año de la pandemia. Uf, 2020, entonces. Ah, no, no hay de qué era. Lástima que no he tenido el tiempo para regresar a hacer cosas de animación. Sí me interesa, pero a veces uno tiene que enfocarse en solo en cuan unas cuantas cosas y ya traigo suficiente ahorita encima. Pero sí, me gustaría regresar. El curso estuvo muy bueno. It's pretty much just sculpting and having fun with the shapes. This is like a very relaxing stage of the process because I'm not really designing anymore, I'm just following the flow of the anatomy of the creature, following whatever I did during these designing stages.
bulge here. Ah, tiene mucha razón, enfocarse en hacerse bueno primero en algo. También tiene que ser Sí, la verdad es que es medio complicado a veces querer hacer de todo. Y es bastante a veces complicado querer abarcar mucho, pero lo padre es que puedes experimentar y ver qué es lo que más te gusta. Y ya en base a eso, pues, irte especializando. And remember to take a look to your of your sculpture from different angles. Not only like from the common ones, like side, front, or like the bottom view, or one from the top. Cleaning these shapes Something right here Volume Can even make these a little smaller. Let's change the design. Try a different color right here. Thinking about maybe yellow. Dark on. Color amarillo para el ojo. A ver cómo se ve. Hey Best, how are you doing? It's been a while. Doing great. Um, this is actually my first streaming of the year, so... I'm excited about this one. Took like a couple of weeks off. So I haven't done any streamings, but hopefully that will be changing slowly. Ojo reptiliano. Uh, podría ser, vamos a ver cómo se ve. La verdad es que no me ha encantado todavía este ojo. No me desagrada, pero se ve mucho más agresivo, eso es seguro. un poquito mejor lo 
que podemos hacer es voy a guardar esto y voy a crear un ojo temporal Hey, Happy New Year, by the way, best Glad to see you here I'm gonna duplicate this eye The one Bottom Just to have something beneath the eye. All right now we're gonna make the final render, at least for tonight. Creo que de momento lo voy a dejar sin color, porque si no tendría que empezar a colorear el resto. Pero, hablando de colores, quería probar justamente con un color claro, a ver cómo se ve. Yeah, it's like this yellow eye. I'm gonna try teal. I don't remember who suggested this color. Could be an option. Create a new layer just for poly paint. This layer is gonna be... Hold. The one that it's going to be paint. cuando colores busco la integración del ojo con los colores de alrededor como parte de su camuflaje sí no sería mala idea la verdad es que sí me agrada eso solo que no creo que me dé tiempo de colorear hoy solo quiero hacer un test I think I really like the, the mixture of those colors. But for now, I'm gonna make a new render. So I'm gonna call it done for tonight. I'm gonna make a quick render in Keyshot. Save this and go back to the I have everything on. Save. So I'm gonna jump into Keyshot. I'm gonna use the bridge. So this is super super useful. And it's on my second screen. Give me a second, guys. Voy a sacar el render. Lo voy a terminar por hoy, mi streaming. Nada más, voy a antes de eso, sacar un render. El OBS para que se vea Keyshot. Ahí está. Entonces, en Keyshot ya me integro todo. Darle un environment diferente. So I'm just gonna make a quick render just to see how it looks under a different lighting scenario. And for example, ah, it's a neat material glass. 
there we go so that's why i created a second eye and then duplicated the eye and made it a little smaller hey aaron <laughs> tortuga <laughs> sí al final tuvo mucha influencia de tortuga no creo que fue matías el que mencionó a la tortuga de la historia sin fin una un buen aporte Add a different material, just plastic one. Just to finish our streaming for tonight. Vamos a buscar un HR que funcione un poquito mejor con esta criatura. Que no me gusta tanto. Y como mencionaba Oscar, pues la idea es igual ya cuando hagamos el, las texturas, buscar algo que, que vaya acorde con la criatura. Que sea como camuflaje, que se vea como algo un poquito más natural. Eso es lo que justamente ayuda como al realismo. Vamos a buscar un material translúcido a ver cómo se ve. Hide it for a second. See how it looks with the black eye. be an option um camera to finish this one up option And there we go. So I guess our baby dragon for tonight is done. And we're gonna continue this one on the next streaming here in the Pixelogic channel. Um, creo que voy a dejar el dragón B por aquí. Hey, Gerard, no, todavía no he terminado. No he terminado chance de terminar de verla. O sea, voy creo que como en el episodio 5. Está muy buena, pero no, no he terminado todavía. ¿Esto de Keyshot es integrado o hay que conseguirlo? Es esa parte, o sea, tienes que conseguirlo por separado. Venden Keyshot por separado y la conexión entre Keyshot y Zbrush también se vende por separado. Un plugin. Hey, Hidden. No, gracias a ti. Está acomodando el UI. Sí. Entiendo tu dolor. A veces a mí también me pasa con, con las nuevas. Hey, Lin, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Qué gusto verte por acá. Hey, Tocayo, igual. Buenas noches. Um, nos vemos el próximo jueves. Voy a estar haciendo streaming de nuevo, pero va a ser en mi canal personal. Ahora sí lo pienso hacer, porque <risa> había estado quedando mal con lo de los streamings. Acabo de darme de cuenta que no se ve en pantalla completa. Ahí está. Um, había estado quedando mal con lo de los streamings, pero la próxima semana hago igual streaming en la noche, jueves, en mi canal personal. Eh, pueden ver mi Twitch arriba como Oscar Trejo. Y si quieren encontrarme en social media, pues ahí igual arriba está como mi ArtStation, Instagram, or, um, Facebook. Tengo unos cuantos tutoriales en YouTube. Nos vemos el próximo jueves. Y después de ese jueves, de este jueves en 8, estaré haciendo el siguiente streaming. 
Y estaremos trabajando de nuevo en nuestro dragón. Dragón bebé. Um, so guys, this is it for this streaming. I'm gonna be back on my usual schedule doing streamings on Thursday. So uh, for next week, I'm gonna be doing the streaming on my personal Twitch channel. You can find it up here. Uh, you can either follow me on Instagram, I mean, on Instagram or well, Instagram too, <laughs> but on Twitch or YouTube. That's where I do my streamings. I'm gonna be working on something very unique. It's gonna be like uh, some brace panic tattoo designs using ZBrush. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I already have something in mind. So see you next week. Uh, the week after, I'm gonna come back to the ZBrush channel right here in the Pixelogic YouTube channel. And I'm gonna be working again in the Dragon. We're gonna be finishing the Dragon, adding details, doing some texture, some poly paint, um, refining the design. There's still some stuff that I would love to change on the creature, but um, mainly yeah, I think it's it's interesting. I, I'm not really a big, big fan of the design for, um, for tonight, but um, Maybe because it's lacking the body. Once I have the body, then hopefully it will change. So, see you next week. Have a good night. Stay safe, guys. Nos vemos. Hey, Hera, descansa igual. ¿Cuál es mi canal? Um, de un segundo en YouTube. Estoy como... No puedo cambiar el nombre, entonces quedo así. Y en Twitch estoy como Oscar Trejo. Pues nos vemos, que pasen una buena noche y cuídense. Bye, bye.